that created all this humongous universe and has to be all-knowing, has the knowledge of everything and has to have an independent will, correct? An independent will. Yes, meaning no one is telling him what to do, what not to do. Yeah? But then if you said that everything in the world is... In the finite, universe, is so finite. But is God finite? We cannot comprehend God. It's beyond our... It's beyond this universe. So that's why if you want... If you are... We are unable to comprehend, but we know God is one. That's all. In terms of finite, the God is one. But how that's do you all. Know? If, if there are more than one, if there is two gods and three gods and four gods and, and five gods, then I will say to you, then each of which will didn't, and have a, a free will. You say, we say to you, all powerful, all knowing has a will, independent will. The other god has all, all powerful, all knowing has independent will. Don't you think this will will contradict? At certain point, it could contradict. When they contradict, who's going who's gonna to take over? Who's going to defeat the other? Which opinion will be? Because we know. If you are, for example, you yourself, you, you are friends, both of you, correct? We literally met five minutes ago. You're my, suppose you are friends. Yeah. You definitely will have disagreement in certain things. Because you have, you have, your will is independent from her will, so you have your own choices, correct? Right. So it comes, sometimes you, it might come across each other, cross boundaries of each other. Then in that case, either you depart or someone will be above the other, correct? And Allah has mentioned this in the Quran, if there is two gods, or if there are two gods, then each of which will take what it belongs to it, or some of them will be in hierarchy. And that doesn't befit the divinity of God. God is one. It cannot be divided into two and cannot be so God is one and unique as well. So if God is incomprehensible and he's separate from this universe, then how, how do you know all of these things? Now we'll come to the point now. How do you know these things? From this universe. How this, look at, look at yourself. You have eyes here, your eyes are not in your knees, your eyes is here. How they came here? To be able to visual, to see. You have a brain, you could speak, you could talk, you have tongue, you could, you could smell, you could hear. All of these sophisticated bodies that you have, it's, it's not something as a coincidence. It has to have someone who has created it and created it perfectly. And by the way, perfectly, even including the people who have deficiencies and things like disability or whatever, this as well as they are, they are perfect. Because otherwise, we need to appreciate what we have as well. Even the evil in the world even created by Allah. I will tell you what, you know Allah now. <laughs> I know Allah, yeah. Okay. God allowed the evil to exist. And that's why we need to understand, allowed to evil to exist in his, in the, in his, in his kingdom for a reason. How we choose to be good if we, there is no evil? How you choose to be a good person if, there, if you have no choice? How you choose? You said you told me you studies. If you gonna, if your teacher, your lecturer at the university told you everyone is gonna pass the exam, will you study? No, because the, the issue is so there have to be a test, and the test of, of this life is to be tested by the evil and to be able to choose between the good and the bad. If you have no ability, that's why we have this free will and we have the free choice to choose the good and the bad. And that's why we are different than other creation or other creatures, which is, and our existence is more important than their existence. How we know, we have a decision, our decision have an, a greater impact than all of them. If it's about reproduction, you know, and just eating and drinking, some animals do a better job than us, correct? But we have a purpose for us here, to be here. What is our purpose? Have you questioned yourself this question? What's the purpose of my life? Is it eat, drink, eat, that's it? Is that, is that all? Is that the purpose of the, of the life? No. What is it then? I don't know, but not that. I will tell you, to be thankful to the Creator. Do you agree on this? I think we should be thankful, but I also think we should make an impact on the world. Like That's part of being thankful to the Creator. Right. Because God told us in the Quran as well. Yeah, is he with you? This is my father. Oh, uh, I see. Ah. I was like, no, he's not with me. Okay. Will he tell me why I should be Muslim? Okay. Okay. Because she had the kind of, if we, we have an agreement that if, if, if Islam makes sense to her, she will accept to be Muslim. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy with that, but you just got to let me know where you go. I've been looking for you for half an hour. Christian almost it's my fault. I approached yeah. her. Okay. Thank you so no, much. We need to continue. Let's finish. Okay, I, I don't yeah. Know. yeah, let's finish that. Another five minutes. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we should be grateful to the Creator. How to be grateful to the Creator is by 
as well being good to the other things, being good to our parents as well in Islam is a big thing. She knows this in Islam, how to be, we, that you cannot be thankful to God, to Allah, if you are not being good to the parents. That's part of our faith as Muslims. And part of our faith as well, the meaning of Islam, to submit your will to the will of the Creator, that is the meaning of Islam. But Anyone? That we have free will. Yes, to submit your will willingly, meaning you choose to do that. You choose ah, to be Muslim. Okay. I choose to pray. I choose to fast. I choose to do the righteous deeds. This is a choice of mine. And this is part of the will of God, which I wanted to submit my will to His will. Right. In the sense, willingly, not forced to do that. Yeah. Willingly to do that. So, some women as well, some sisters, they pray. Some sisters, they wear hijab. Or they, this is out of their own will. They choose to do that. In the sense. So that's their own choice. You think because. every person in Islam, they choose to do yeah, that? Yeah, every person in Islam, they choose to do yeah. yeah. Like, I, I've, I've never been forced to do She's never been forced. She's entitled to do what yeah. what she chooses to do. But the point is, it is best. They will tell her to do much better. They will tell her to pray. They will tell her to do more. They will tell her to wear hijab. They will tell her this. We have to remind her about it, but it's up to her to choose. And then it's her choice. It's her life. And as well. But is there ever, uh, ever an aspect of force within that community? I will tell you something. We live, all of us, we live under certain forces. All of us. Yeah? Including yourself, including yourself, everyone. There are forces that, you know, for example, 100 years ago in this country, you walking around, walking, wearing like this, people do not accept you like that. So people at that time, they were kind of, will follow whatever, whatever the environment is. So the point is, it is we are willingly or unwillingly, we are forced to do certain things within the community. So in the same time, but God doesn't want this. God wanted this to be sincerely from our heart, to do what he wants from us willingly. That's what Allah, that's what Allah wants from us. Not to be forced to do it. Allah wants us to accept to do it willingly within, within our will. That's what God wants and loves from us. That's why we have to be sincere in our deeds. So, and that's why the best of the charity, she knows, the best of the charity is the charity that you do it in private, no one's seeing you. The best of fasting is the fasting, no one's telling, you are not telling around. The best of the prayer is a nice prayer where no one's seeing you. You understand who yeah. things that you do it willingly yourself. Now, uh, just remind me your name, by the way. Dulcie. Dulcie. Okay. Now, as I said to you, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent 1400 years ago. Now, and he came with a miracle, with the Quran. With the, sorry. Quran. Right. Quran yeah. was his miracle. And yeah. he claimed that his miracle. And Quran, the language of the Quran, the Arabic language, is so beautiful, so sophisticated, made many of the Arabs of that time to accept Islam because the way the structure of the Quran was amazing. But now, how did, how does Dulcie, Dulcie, yeah, will appreciate the Quran? Well, Dulcie doesn't know Arabic. She maybe she knows some words, but she doesn't know Arabic to understand the Quran and to understand the miracle behind, in, you know, the Quran. But Dulce as well, she is well educated and she learned things and she learned things that make sense. She studied philosophy according to what you said, correct? Now, I will tell you, I will give you some few examples that it is impossible, impossible that someone like Muhammad, peace be upon him, during that time, 1400 years ago, to be able to give this information. And that shows you the Quran is came from God as he came. He said this Quran came from God, the creator of the heavens and earth. But how could you trust him? Now we will know how we can trust him. The people of his time, even his opponent, even people who didn't believe in him, they mentioned things about him. They said he is trustworthy. And he was someone who lived all his life. He never lied. He never did wrong things all his life. And how he was you know that? it's all the history and all the historian written about him, including even even including non-Muslims, they wrote about him. You could read about his Bible. But as well, the Quran confirmed this. And now we'll, when you read the Quran, then you will know this book, it cannot be said randomly. For example, you've been to the sea before, correct? What is the deepest point any person could dive 1400 years ago? I don't know. Do you have a guess? Just give a guess. A deep wait, the deepest, a deepest point. point any person could dive, free diving, 1400 years ago. With no equipment, of course, okay. they didn't have equipment. Uh, 40 meters. Let's say 40 meters. Will someone will know what's happening deep in the ocean? Will they? Yeah. Yeah. Can they know what's deep in the ocean? Not the deepest point, but 40 yeah. meters. Yeah, let's say 40 meters, even though I will say 20 meters or okay. whatever. But anyway, so God has said in the Quran 
those who are away from the guidance of God, they are like deep in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Above him there is a wave, above the wave there is another wave. Above the sea there is a cloud. Even if he took his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness upon darkness. So, God is talking about certain type of darkness. Certain type of darkness. God didn't say, it's, God didn't say just deep in the ocean. God said, deep in the ocean, there is some, some details. Above him there is a wave, above the wave there is another wave. So two layers of waves and there is a cloud which prevent the light to come. When the sunlight comes and if it's a cloudy weather, 40% or more of the, of the sunlight will be reflected back and only 60% goes through. Now this 60%, if there is waves on the surface of the sea, which people, everyone appreciate this, the surface waves will break the light, correct? So it will not allow the, whole, the full light to go in and half of the light will be able to go through. Now, people understood this up to 20 meters, fine. But who taught Muhammad about there is another waves deep in the ocean, which they are called the sea current. Have you heard about it? Sea the, the sea currents. No, no. Did you watch, did you watch Nemo before? The Nemo, the captain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see that when he go in the sea currents? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. under the ocean, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So deep in the ocean, there are sea currents. They go like rivers, yeah? Right. And they travel by waves. And as well, when it comes to the remaining of the sunlight there, it will break the remaining of the light. And deep in the ocean, if someone take his, took his hand out of his pocket and look at it like this, he cannot see. Pitch dark because the absence of light. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? God. Good. This is you saying, not me. You are saying. No. <laughs> so you wanted me to say. No, no, this is what you said, which is the default thing. No one is able to get this. Again, for example, when you look in the sky in the night and you see the stars. Yes. Do you see the stars now? No. What do you see? I see clouds in blue sky. Before, I mean in the night, when you see the stars. Do you see them currently at the current age and time or you see? No, you don't. What do you see? You see them like millions years of, millions of years ago yeah so god has mentioned about this fact how people will know about these cosmology you know this cosmological fact how they will know 1400 years do you know they have any understanding about do you think they know anything about it in the past will they know about the stars the thing no. of course not so god has said when god making an oath in something in the quran it shows this something is important for you to ponder so God has said in the Quran, I will not make an oath by the positions of the stars. And it's a great oath, but you are not yet aware of that. So Allah says, when you see into the sky, you literally you are seeing the positions of the stars. Millions of years ago, when the light departed from that star. Who taught Muhammad about this? Did Muhammad know that? Before, no. He knew the Quran told. But wasn't it scientists? Who no that? one knows it. It's, it's only recent talking, I'm saying, these things discovered when they discovered the telescopes and things, it's, yeah. this is a very, very recent discovery. It's yeah. not something which is, you're talking about 150 years ago, and that's all. Not 1400 years ago. No one knows about it. Now, another fact, what about, what the people will know about the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother? What do they know about it? Do you think they know the details? Eight years ago. Yeah. 14, 1400 years ago. No. Okay, look at this. Allah says in the Quran that the human being made from the clay or from the soil, then came into alaqa, and alaqa like either a clot or a leech, similar to leech, attached in the womb. And this leech developed into like what is equivalent to a bite. And this bite developed into bones. And this bones has covered, was covered with the flesh. And this flesh became another creation. And then, who taught Muhammad about this? Tell me. Allah, well, hold on. Yeah. Allah taught Muhammad this. Is yes. this what you're saying? Yes. And adding to this, there are historical facts in the Quran, let alone, let alone scientific facts. Quran is not. The soil? Yeah, we are from the soil. That's a scientific fact. Yeah, look at us. Look at our ingredients. You will find... Soil? When we dissolve, when we dissolve in the soil, we go back. Yes. Yeah, I know. So, so Allah says, initially, we are like, we are like Adam, our father, our forefather Adam, came from the clay, Adam and Eve. 
So it's the same as what Yeah, the same, yeah, as similar to that. We believe that God has created Adam and then created Eve or Hawa and then from the clay and then after that it became we start, you know, pro, you know, reproduction. So you take that literally? Now some again, what do you mean by literally? I mean, you take it for the exact words, not as a figurative sense. We don't need to take a figurative, we take it as it is, because Allah told us in the Quran that He has created Adam. So He said this. So before we know that the Quran is saying the truth, going back to these scientific facts, which cannot be said, except by someone who, has, who is the creator of the heavens and earth. So and I'm telling you, for example, God has said, when we discovered that this universe is expanding, when we discovered this? Um... I don't know when we discovered Recently, that. recently, 100, 200, 150 years ago, we start knowing that this universe is expanding. Yeah? Now, now 40, 30 years, let's say. Allah says in the Quran, we have created the heavens and we are expanding it. Who taught Muhammad about this 1400 years ago? So in the Quran, he said this? Yes. Adding to your information, historical facts, because I was talking about historical facts initially. But how do I know that from, okay, so this was ages ago that the Quran was... Yeah, 1400 years ago, yes. So how do you know that all of this evidence passed down wasn't changed and... Good, that's a good question. The Quran is reserved in two methodologies. It's reserved as memorized, meaning there are now over than 15 million people on earth who memorize the Quran from cover to cover or 15 million people on earth now memorize the Quran from cover to cover with vowels and she knows what's the meaning of the Quran with vowels the way that it is yeah the way that was revealed in Arabic language not in English in Arabic language now which means if you burn the whole Quran in the world we are able to produce the same because we have more than 15 million people memorize the Quran there is no single book being memorized like the Quran because that's one thing and as well there are as well it is reserved as well in written we still have copies written in the first century the second century the third century of Islam until nowadays and all of it is reserved even in the in writing the way of writing it is reserved as it is so the Quran is well is the most reserved book which which is intact nothing nothing touched the Quran but in other religions surely they learn their own the, the other religion things being changed no 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 there is no no book be memorized like the Quran in Judaism surely they have to learn the Bar Mitzvah yeah but they but they don't there is no single book I'm saying there is no single book on earth be memorized like the Quran no single book on earth so that shows because God said in the Quran as well, we are sending, we are, we, are, we have revealed to you Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this revelation and we will be preserving it. So Allah says it will be preserved. How is it going to be preserved like this? So that's why Muslims until now, they memorize the Quran days and nights and that, not because, because they take it as voluntary memorization. Many people, for example, we, we educate our children the Quran and we try to teach them and then that's how it is. So the Quran is reserved book. And that's miracle, one of the miracles of the Quran, it's still as it is. It is still as it is until today. 1400 is intact. No single vowel being added to it. No single letter being taken out of it. So, and the, Muhammad, who was the prophet, he was the only one who heard God's message from... Not only one. We believe as well in other prophets and messengers of God. We believe in Noah. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, all of them, they are prophets of God, messengers of God. God has conveyed the message to them. And, uh, and the, but the Quran is uh, reserved because uh, the, it's the last and the final message from God. And but that was that, from Muhammad? For, revealed to Muhammad, that's from Muhammad. He didn't bring the Quran from himself. No, yes, but revealed to Muhammad. So how, if he was, but when, he, when, he, when Allah conveyed that message to him, yes. he was the only person with him. Speaking. Yeah, Allah didn't say to him directly uh, in one occasion only, but mainly the occasion was through Angel Gabriel will, will come to him and will, 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 uh, will narrate the Quran to him and then he will, uh, he will recite the Quran back. But, but if there was no one else to witness it, how do you know it's true? What I told you now, how do you know it's true? You're saying it's passed down from uh, era to era, but he, Muhammad was the only one who heard it from the mouth of the angel. Yeah, the yeah, and then after that, people around him, he he he, he read it, and then they write it behind that's him. That's still second hand. Yes. 
So how can they prove that he is speaking absolute truth if they have no concrete evidence? Good. The Quran, if we believe the Quran is the word of God, as you mentioned earlier, all this information that tells you that the Quran came from God, yeah, and more information. I, I, I was I was saying those all miracles. Don't you think it came from God? Have you read the Quran? No. She will read. She will read. Yeah. Okay. Read I'll read it. it. No problem. But, but uh, I want to learn Arabic. I, I will. Know. I will. I will help you to learn. I don't mind. I don't mind to help you. Inshallah, that's fine for me. But I, what I wanted from you, I wanted you to go with this idea. Don't you think the information that he give you it cannot be said by someone in that in that time in 1400 years ago? Do you agree? I don't know yet. No, no, no. You said no. It, it's impossible again. It's impossible. It's impossible to be said. I need time to process it. Yeah, but you already processed it. When you said yes, it come from God. That's it. No, I know, but I think that I knew that that's what you wanted me to say. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Father. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, it's in, English. in English, yeah, in English, yeah. Okay, great. That's translation of the Quran. Great. As well, there are historical facts in the Quran. For example, what was the source of history about the ancient Egypt? They used to use the Bible or the Old Testament about Pharaoh and Moses and things like that, correct? Right. Now, when the Quran was revealed, you will find the story of Moses and the story of, of Joseph mentioned in the Quran. You'll find the story of, of, uh, of Moses scattered around the Quran talking about Pharaoh and Moses and Harun and these things. But when it came... Well, that's for you too. Yeah, no, she's a Muslim, inshallah. Yeah? When it came to the... When it came to the... To Joseph, and there's one chapter about Joseph, peace be upon him. When it came to Joseph, suddenly God talks about Joseph and the king, and the king and Joseph. So God didn't mention Pharaoh whatsoever in that area. So the Christian used to say, and we had no any source of history. And by the way, for you to know, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was illiterate man. He was unable to read and write. He was illiterate. He was, he was, he can't read and write. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, when the Quran came to us, the Christian used to say, Oh, your Quran got it wrong. Look at the Bible. It's always talking about Joseph and Pharaoh, talking about Moses and Pharaoh. And you see a king here, there is a mistake here, this and that. We said if it came from God, we believe. Until nearly 100 years ago, an Englishman from here, he was someone who did a good research about, about ancient uh, Egyptian language. And then he dismantled through, have you heard about the Zota Stone? Yeah. He dismantled the hieroglyphic language into old Greek language into Latin. And then after that, they start knowing about what's being written in all these monuments and all of these uh, pyramids and things and all the, the, the scriptures that they found. And then they came to this conclusion. They said, it is impossible to the, it is impossible, historically, historically impossible, that the king at the time of Joseph to be called Pharaoh, impossible because Hexos used to rule Egypt and they are from the Mediterranean rulers and they never used the, the title Pharaoh. Later on, when the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian took over, they introduced the title Pharaoh again. So the question is, who taught Muhammad about historical facts? Tell me. You tell me. I'm asking you. I don't know. No, you know. You know yourself. Yeah, and Allah says about some people like this, they say, you will not say it, but they know it in their heart. Just say what's in your heart. And you are a brave woman, you came here to discuss about theology. I came here to discuss it, but I need to read it first before I No read. problem, you have the time, you have the whole life to read. But I told you, if it makes sense to you, did what I said to you makes sense to you, makes sense to you. Just because you comprehend something doesn't mean you agree with it. No, no, I'm asking, did it make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Does it make Islam is saying the truth now, according to you, according to what I said to you? And all what I said to you is in the Quran. And the Quran is not a book of science. It is not a book of history, but it has scientific facts. It has yeah. historical facts. I believe that. And it has as well, and by the Quran, it came to guide us to the right path. Is to submit our will to the will of the Creator. He needs to worship none but Allah alone and to follow Muhammad as a messenger of God. As simple as this is the clear message of Islam. That's all. And no one came to this step to Islam except they found the light in their heart. They found subhanAllah. That's something that they never found in any other 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 than Islam. So that's why I told you it made sense to you, but you a bit reluctant, you wanted to go to do your research or whatever. I appreciate this and I respect this, no problem. But is what I told you made sense to you? It did. So if 
Will you accept to be Muslim? Once I've read the Quran, I will make that decision. According to your promise. According to my promise, yes. So you should accept Islam now then. <laughs> but you understood it. I didn't bring anything. I haven't understood the whole book. Okay. You have the whole life. Even many Muslims didn't understand the whole Quran. It doesn't mean the Islam, the beauty of Islam, is a journey of learning. It's an ongoing journey of learning. It's not just one day learning, you learn. It's a journey of learning. All of us, we make our way. We just every day, every day we learn something, we learn something, we learn something. This is the beauty of Islam. And every day, we learn a new thing in Islam. Even my, my status as a teacher and a sheikh, whatever, I still, I'm still learning. I'm still a student of knowledge. And that's the beauty of Islam. So that's why. So do I actually. But thank you so much. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to have any, how we can communicate if you have any questions or something? Will you be back here next? When do these happen again? I don't know if I may back. If you want to take my email or something, Thing or if you want Don't to. worry, but thank you so much. For no problem. If you go helpful. outside, just get. There are some leaflets by the by oh, the gate here. You, so you could have them. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye.